Caddis Maximus here this time doing a review of this Craftsman Air Ratchet. This is a uh, common style air ratchet. I've done a few air ratchet reviews. Did a teardown of a Harbor Freight impacting air ratchet, which was kind of neat. This is a dedicated video of just what you might expect and how most of these come apart. This is a Craftsman 3.8. This one already failed. One note is cheaper air tools will have like plastic covers for the valves and that isn't any good. This Craftsman even had plastic internals and so unfortunately that meant that it uh, disintegrated. So really the first part would be, and if you're going to maintain these, is just to take apart the valve. There's just a few parts in there. There's a cap. There'll be some type of valve which disintegrated in this Craftsman. And then in this case there's just a little post. This post here, what this does is just press up on the bottom of the valve and then the spring is what helps return it. So what ends up happening is you have the spring up here, it presses say on a ball bearing, and then this is pressing on the other side which of course is actuated by the lever. This thing we can get a dry pin punch and remove the roll pin in that. Removing roll pins is always kind of a fun situation when they're not in a bore that helps align it. Then you have to be real careful when you're holding the pin. Sometimes you'll have to put something like this in advice. The nice thing about roll pins is they're designed to hold pretty well, but also be pretty easy to drive out. did want to mention this is a Japanese made. I think you can just barely see it there. Uh, so it is surprising. These old craftsmen at least were a uh, decent country manufacturer. Got that roll pin out of there. Uh, one thing to note is with the roll pins, it can be very difficult to remove them if you're just trying to hold on a table. Really, lots of times you do need a vise to be able to get it started. As we can see, there's just a little brass fitting in there, which is what this little post guides on. And then, of course, the lever is actually what keeps the whole this post from falling out of the tool. And that's pretty much all there is in this handle. And then there's the motor. So we'll go and take that apart. In this case, it'll be a little bit easier. Many times you'll use like an adjustable wrench on the flats or and hold the nut in advice. If you don't have something, because the nuts on these are around an inch and a half or maybe 38 millimeters, something around that size. So I usually use just an adjustable wrench on this side. And in my case, I happen to have actually a large wrench. And Normally these are not counter threaded. There's nothing special. So we'll just push down on the right and lift up on the left Sometimes there's a little bit of Loctite or they are just simply torqued pretty tight These are designed many of these so that you can rotate the head to a different angle relative to the switch to be more comfortable for you But they can get locked up pretty good There we go And this definitely feels like it has some thread locker on there. That's for sure the head doesn't seem there we go really neat so they have on this craft one they have put some type of adhesive on the threads so the head wasn't ever meant to be adjustable on this one many more professional models even though this is a Japanese made craftsman many more professional models you would loosen this knot and then you could in you could spin this head around to a different angle then you tighten down the knot in this case they use it's not Loctite or a traditional type of ceramic thread locker. It's like a glue or an epoxy. Um, I can say about this Craftsman that this thing would never have come loose. This thing would have totally... Well, the, the throttle is what broke on this, but uh, through if you kept it oiled, it didn't matter how much abuse you would have given it. There's no way this nut would have ever, ever come loose by itself. This is a lot of work. Let me finish this out. All right, we finally get that out. They actually put so much adhesive, the threads were just entirely coated from top to bottom. Uh, it fought till the very end. So this would be the whole vane motor and gear reduction. There is a gear reduction because how air ratchets work, of course, is they are like a normal ratchet. It just has a super heavy duty pawls inside them. There's a little shaft in here that's splined that the output of the gearbox drives and that shaft goes up through here and there's a little, this piece here go, wobbles back and forth. That's the same as you using your hand to turn the ratchet. And there's just like a little plate in there with a little pin that just spins around and this thing moves this thing back and forth. 
So as far as the vane motor or the gearbox, here's our gearbox. It's just a simple uh, three gear planetary gearbox. And then the vane motor itself is what's driving that. And there it is right here, ball bearing. Usually these will just tap out. Let me go get a block of wood. And we are back. I can guarantee most people are not going to have as much trouble as I did disassembling this. This was surprisingly pretty tight tolerances. So what we have is we have a back bearing. And since because there is... Uh, a pass-through from the hole. It's hard to see in the bottom of the casing. That's where the air comes in and then it exhausts out this little notch in the front. It has a little boot to protect the rear bearing. The oil, when you put it into an air tool, just starts circulating around through here. Although what's interesting is it seems that this back bearing doesn't get quite as much oil as it could, but it has a nice aluminum support. Part of the expense of air tools is they have the air motors have to be very finely machined so if we look at this one here we can see that is a really tight tolerance and tight and ground surface and so air comes in here we go so in the back that seal protects this bearing when you actually pull the trigger it's allowing air to go through these two tiny holes the steel cartridge and this is actually a steel outer wear cartridge so this was actually surprisingly well built steel on steel and many modern air tools they've switched the aluminum on this those two holes go right in that little notch and if we see the alignment here get this back into place that is where it is close in under normal position so the air goes in there starts expanding will push against the veins like this and as the air expands it pushes the the vein around until it makes it open to this side slot and when it does, that's where the exhaust is, that distinctive sound that they make. And this side slot would, of course, in, when it's inside the, the housing here, would be aligned with this exhaust port. And so that's the airflow of a air wrench, or excuse me, an air ratchet. I'm sorry about the focus issues. I'm having some real focus issues with my camera. But that is the gist. A lot of people kind of talk about air motors, but they don't, you know, it... It's nice to be able to conceptualize how the vein, the air pressure, how the rotor is offset so the air pressure as it expands pushes against the side of the vein. And so the vein is what takes the most uh, wear. And if we take a look at these, they're actually not made out of any form of metal. They are a fiber composite material which lasts a long time and provides both rigidity as well as being lightweight, being kind of self-lubricating, and providing actually a surprising lifetime for a situation where you have these veins that are constantly rubbing. Given that air tools don't see much grit or debris through the motor, nonetheless, that's when air motors start to fail. It's usually because there's some kind of chip or something on the edge of that, or on the edge of these veins, and it's letting air go by. Otherwise, the motors just have a couple bearings, and they're surprisingly easy to fix. So the last part of this is getting, there was this washer. They did have a washer inside there. That's what prevent, kept those, wow, focus is not working well. It's what kept those gears from uh, wanting to interfere with the rest of the air motor and our front bearing and then a, you know, a machine collar. That was kind of a little bit cheaper. Instead of using a bigger bearing, they use a little sleeve instead, but that's okay. It's a simple air ratchet. So on this side, we still have the nut, which I guess it would really be considered a jam nut because you're threading this head in. And yes, you can, this style can be adjusted. It's just that they never intended it because they just put so much darn Loctite on there. But the idea is that you would have the head, say you don't like the head, the head being in normal position, you could turn it 90 degrees, have it something like that, and then be able to run the nut down and jam it against the body. So it does have that standard design. It's a Sears just insisted on the Loctite. Well, Sears puts so much Loctite on this nut, it's actually basically one, a single piece of metal now, which is rather unfortunate they made this totally unserviceable like this. I guess they were just going to expect you to use the warranty, which is kind of a shame to do that with like a standard design. So we'll get this snap ring out of here. I usually like to have my fingers or something over snap rings. You generally want to wear safety glasses because they can, of course, shoot out and hit you in the eye. Keep your fingers over them. That usually keeps them kind of together. So let's get this cover plate off. Usually this stuff kind of falls apart. On this one, it's not wanting to. 
Okay, of course the air rash I decided to take apart for a YouTube video will be recalcitrant. We have the bottom plate, and then it is just one big assembly, which is the ratchet. And surprisingly enough, it's just a round head ratchet mechanism, not particularly oversized on this. Three paws. This is what it's ratcheting against. If I can get it to cooperate and... Oh, I see what's happening. If you do have any trouble getting the head off, this little... This is the little mechanism. So as this is going... This is sliding back and forth against the drive post and so this is really the where the rubber meets the rose this drive post is just going back and forth spinning you know cranking it that way this is sliding cranking it this way this is sliding this is an area where none of that air tool the oil only makes it through the motor so you got to make sure you do this part too so kind of some complicated parts in here lots of fine machining so this is the ratchet paw and then this is our little die which is kind of interesting about this type of setup is you can actually see a round head ratchet work. It just clicks. So anything on this side clicks this way. And these things are pretty easy to disassemble here because it just has a pin that holds the paw. And we can just push that out. The paw falls out. And what keeps the reverse mechanism in there is the actual little pin that's acting it, that is working the paw itself. So you have to do is just pop that pin out and it's associated little spring and then you can pull the little maybe we can get some focus here there's our little reverse switch and it was just all the reverse switch is held in place by this this tiny little steel pin so sometimes those will wear out and break and that's what will cause your whole reverse switch to fall out then that call totally fails the ratchet because of course uh, the that's what keeps the paw actually ratcheting and so in this case, what do you have now? That's like a thumb driver. So anyway, that was kind of a funky teardown of our air ratchet, but at least you have the general idea of how they work and this, the parts that are inside. Um, you know, not having electrical tools. You know, air tools tend to be, you know, around the same price. Sometimes they're cheaper. Sometimes they're much more expensive than, you know, uh, electrical power tool counterpart. And part of the deal is the fact that Overall, they are designed to last longer. There is almost no plastic parts except for, unfortunately, in the throttle mechanism itself on this Craftsman, which is what really brought it to death in the plastic cap. Uh, otherwise, it's almost entirely steel, and there's just a bunch of machine parts that are associated with it. Not that there isn't for corded tools, but there is some, you know, like this ratchet head here. You can see that this required just quite a bit of machining operations to get this all this whole head shaped out. Uh, this that is actually that is not a needle bearing that run that the rod runs on that is just a sleeve bearing unfortunately but quite a bit of work in one of these and especially the vein motors which really have to be ground and uh, pretty well sized so anyway I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do and I certainly hope everybody stays healthy uh, and safe and of course, hopefully things will settle down very soon. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.